Saddle up boys and girls because this is gonna be a good one. There's always much confusion about individual stocks versus hedge funds versus index funds or ETFs. So I'm gonna make a short and sweet video, get right to the point, give you the pros and cons of everything. And by the end, I'm gonna tell you guys what my favorite one is. So first on the list would be individual stock. And these ones are probably the easiest to understand because it's just a stock issued by the company. So if you're going to buy a stock of Google, then you're just buying into a piece of that company. They're gonna issue you the stock. You're gonna be an owner and have equity in the company. And so if the company does well, then the stock price will probably reflect that. And that'll mean that you'll make money. On the other hand, if the company does not do well, or if they miss their earning reports or something like that, the stock price will definitely reflect that and it could drop. Some pros of owning individual company stocks are that a company could do exceedingly well and so it could jump 10, 15, 20, 50 percent in a short period of time. Now most companies don't do that but it is possible that a company could just crush it for a quarter or even a year. It's also fun to be an owner of companies that you like, say of Nike or Disney or something like that. The con of owning individual stocks though are that they can be even more risky. No one knows exactly what will happen in five years or 10 years. To make a return over the average 11% or so, one must be actively researching and ultimately betting on the right companies monthly, if not weekly, in order to stay current and ahead. It can be done and some even excel, but for the most part, people that hold individual company stocks do not beat the S&P 500 or the total stock market index over long periods of time. If you're going to pick this strategy, this is going to be one where you need to be very hands-on, you need to be reading literature, what companies have competitive advantages moving forward, and trying to actively understand the market and the industries that you are picking. Next are hedge funds or mutual funds or anything that's an actively managed fund, which just basically means that somebody is picking all of the stocks and all of the different equities or different things put together in order to make this fund. And so because it's somebody who's actively doing this, maybe a financial advisor, they're going to be charging you for putting together this fund. Now the whole goal with this type of fund, mutual funds, hedge funds, anything, is to try to beat the market, try to beat passive indexes like S&P 500 or the full stock market index. Now the pro on these are that you do have very, very smart people who are running these things and they're very smart at analyzing numbers and trends and things. And sometimes you'll get crazy returns of 30, 40, 50%. But there's many cons on these as well. First thing is historically, these have not held up well. Roughly speaking, only 10 to 20% of active managed funds beat their benchmarks over any 10 year period. And like I was saying before, when you're paying somebody to manage your fund, you're paying them a percentage probably of your total portfolio and probably paying them 10 to 20% of the profit that they make for you each year. So that's kind of like starting a baseball game down one run already. You have to pay something back before you can even start to make your own money. For me, those are huge cons. And that's ultimately why I started this channel was to teach you guys to have enough financial literacy to be able to do all this on your own so you don't have to pay somebody else a percentage. So now the last one would be index funds or ETFs, which are basically the same thing. An index fund is something that was put together where it's tracking a whole bunch of different companies and it's a piece of a bunch of different companies or industries so that when you buy one share of this fund you're actually buying into a small piece of a whole bunch of other companies. An ETF is an exchange traded fund, say that three times fast, basically something that mirrors a lot of these indexes. They're usually at a lower price point to get in compared to an index. So like the S&P 500 index might be something like 4,500 to buy in for one share, but VU, Vanguard's ETF tracking that S&P 500 might be something like $400 instead of that. You're still getting the same percentage of each of the companies that are in the index, you're just buying in at a lower rate. Index investing or ETF investing is very, very passive. Whereas before when I was talking about the individual company stocks where you have to do a bunch of research and figure out if this is gonna be good next month or next year, index funds or ETFs do all the work for you. Especially my favorite one, which is the S&P 500. That one literally does everything. So you buy in, you have the top 500 companies in your portfolio now, and you know that 10 years from now, if there are 
new companies that are the top 500 or some are shifting around, that fund does it for you. It'll take out the companies that are lower performing and it'll bring in new higher performing companies. Like just recently, Tesla was brought into the S&P 500. If you look at the top companies 10 years ago and then the top companies 20 years ago and 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they're all different. And so it's very hard for us to say that 10 years from now, what company is going to be the best company? We may think that it's Apple or Microsoft or Amazon or one of these, but it may be some totally new company. And so if you're invested into an index fund that tracks and just holds the best companies, then you know you're going to be safe there. Now you guys are smart. I'm pretty sure based off of everything that I've talked about today, you know which one's gonna be my favorite and my pick, and that's gonna be the index funds or ETF. But as far as index funds and ETFs, I recently made a video on the best ones for 2022, and I think that you should watch it now.